Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I take this very special moment to welcome you for the online service. I'm Reverend Albert Karanja. <music> Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him, for he is near. Rest, pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. In your word, you invite us, our Lord, to continue to seek you. And when we seek you, our Lord, you have promised to be found. May your presence be with us, our Lord, as you refer yourself to us in your word. And we do pray all this brief and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to do our first reading that is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 1. And I'm going to do from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. The person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Our other reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah 29, and I'm reading first 13 and 14. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'll be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you, you creas the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I, I carried you into exile. Our final text is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and I'm reading verse 17 and 18. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Um, praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'll be sharing on pursuing our intimacy with God. I'm happy that uh, Christ has uh, given me the hope of eternal life and has continued to shield me with his gracious love. We've been sharing on the way God loves us, or the way he is intimate, and the way he has continued to pursue man. The giving of his only begotten son to us, that in him we may have eternal life, is an act of great love or an act of pursuing man. We went further to look at the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, the way he passionately moved to reach out even to people who felt either unloved or felt they were outcasts. The way our Lord Jesus Christ reached out to the Samaritan woman, the way he reached out to Zacchaeus, 
and went to his home and said, Today I'm you a guest. We see God pursuing man. But today we want to look at God's expectation. This God who pursues man, God who does man, also has a great desire to see man loving back or having a response of love also to the loving kindness of our Lord. We've read from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, in verse 13. This was um, um, a letter from Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, to the exiles who are in Babylon. This was a letter that was sent um, to people now who are very far from the Arad, that is uh, the Arad of Israel. And they were taken captive. And this letter that had traveled across a very fast distance it had a message of comfort and also a message of advice on how the children of Israel will handle themselves in the time that they were in exile. But this also let our hearts can tell us how God is intimate. Even when they had failed, he reaches out to them even in exile to offer them a wands of comfort through this letter sent by prophet Jeremiah to the exiles. But the most striking thing is this specific promise to those Jews in exile. And it comes out in a very clear way. The way God had planned. Or moreover, he reveals his heart. What it has for them. And the plans that he has for them. In verse 13, it says... You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. As I've said, this is a specific promise to the Jews who are in exile. But it captures a basic principle of relating to our God that holds in every generation of believers. And this very important principle is that God has failed himself completely, or God has made himself completely and totally available to man or to those who want him. He calls us, but he does not force himself or force us to follow him. We cannot ignore the work of his grace that he has done everything to reach out to this man or to us. But that notwithstanding, he has called us to 
to seek him also. It is also a very crucial element of our fellowship with him. The way we respond to his love. The way we choose also to seek him. He has failed himself to us. But he also desires that we get that great desire to infest much in this, this is great love that he has for us as his children. We have read also from Psalms 1. If we go to verse 2, his this man who derives in the Lord, the Lord, and he meditates upon it day and night, he is compared to a tree that is planted by the streams of water and he yields its fruit in season and its leaves does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. For God has made himself available to man, completely available. But he also invites us also to delight in him, to seek our fulfillment in him. It is like to, to dive deep in him. He has shown us that great love without a measure. By giving us his only begotten son. He has invited us to him. To have a relationship with him. And also to have that hope of eternal life. But God desires also when he has done all that for us. That he may also respond by seeking him, investing the wholeness of ourselves to him. He told the Jews who are in exile that your will, you will find me when you seek me. With the heart of your heart, you find me when you seek me. With the heart of your heart. When we experience this great love of God, there must be a response that is aroused in our hearts, which is very important, a crucial, a very crucial part of a Christian faith. The way we respond to this great love of God. The way we follow him after he has initiated everything in reaching out to us, initiated the great last sacrifice that aroused us to him, then how do we respond? Two kinds of trends that are very prevalent in uh, our times. One of that is like the way we have like a transactional relationship. Much of what we hear in our everyday today life 
is the way God will prosper us. We are coming to him because we will be rich. We are coming to him because he will prosper our businesses. It is like we are much connected to God because of what he will do to us. And this is not the kind of a relationship that we are invited to. Like we are there connected to transact a business with God. God has called us to delight in him. Find our fulfillment in him. And it is even stated in a very clear way. In Psalms that 7 verse, verse 4. Delight in the Lord. And he will fulfill the desires of your heart. Not really come into him just to receive. But rather delighting in him. Seeking this God who has invested the rod for our lives. There is no relationship that grows without being given time and energy. For us to enjoy or to get to know the depth and the riches in this great relationship that God has established between us and him, we are called upon to invest our time and our energies in it. And then we come to discover how rich. Because finding God is finding treasure. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave also a parable of a person who finds treasure in a piece of land, he goes out and disposes all that whatever he has to be able to acquire this piece of land that has treasure in it. And that is how our relationship with God is. It is a treasure that makes us to forsake all the others just to get it. For getting it is getting everything. Being in right relationship with God is getting everything. We sell all of our everything to get a hold of this treasure. Our relationship with God is a treasure that makes us to dispose every other. For the sake of this treasure. And then it requires our energy. I've talked of two kinds of trends in our times. One of, our, one of them is having that transactional relationship. Where we are into God because of what we want to receive. It doesn't say that we are told in Psalms that 7, first of all, delight in the Lord and he will fulfill the desires of your heart. It doesn't even say go to church on Sunday every time. Because more of what is um, highlighted here is that relationship that is born not out of what we want to get. Brother, delighting is finding our fulfillment in God. And that changes everything. That is, we should not take our relationship with God 
like a transactional relationship that is enjoyed between a buyer and either a retailer or a shopkeeper. A buyer and a shopkeeper. Their relationship is just transactional. It doesn't go beyond the transaction. Receiving what you want and getting more of a, a, a pay and receive kind of a deal. And you know, most of what we hear is that people are told to come to the church because they will receive. The other kind of a thread is this kind of a spavicial relationship. That is which is seen. People who do not invest any real energy in their relationship with God. They don't even take time in prayer. Never take time in reading the word of God. They don't have any time for this God. They don't have any energy for this God. But yet they cling on. God loves us. Yes, he loves us. He continues to love us unconditionally. But there is no relationship that can grow without our time invested in it. No relationship that can be able to grow without prioritizing. We must see God's fellowship with us, his relationship with us as a priority. It comes above all the other things. If we are to pursue our intimacy with God, we must prioritize. We must give it time and energy. We are told about this person who is blessed. He meditates. He delights in the Lord, the Lord. And meditate on his law day and night. Meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. In a more clear way. Is that this is someone who reads the word of the Lord. Seeking to know. Much about the relationship that he has with God. He wants to know the mind of God. He wants to know the riches of this relationship. When Paul talked about praying for the Ephesians, in our last text that we read from Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, he says that the God uh, we've sat in 16, I did not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him, that means that like even after we come to God, it doesn't bring an end to every evil and desire to see God. But rather, when we come to God, we are to continue to seek Him. He prays that the eyes of their heart be enlightened, 
that you may know what the hope of which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance? Uh, the relationship with God is so rich. While we, have, we are invited closer to God, his relationship with us is so rich. In a way, we need to continue to dig deep in this offer of our Lord. It is so rich because whenever we are in that intimate relationship with God, we have our peace. We have our confidence to live in our everyday today life. We are empowered. We are fruitful. We are told like this person who delights in the Lord is like a tree that is planted by the water. Not a seasonal stream, but rather by the river that supplies this plant with all the nutrients what it requires and what it needs. And that is why how our relationship with God nourishes our lives, both spiritual and the physical life. They are all nourished in this relationship. But how many take this fullness of the riches of God? God desires that we may have a heart that continues to seek him daily, delighting in him, seeking him in every way. When we have come to the Lord, we do not just sit there. Although our salvation is not by works, but we start a relationship. And a relationship is given energy. A relationship is given time. A relationship is made a priority. And when all these are done, a relationship is fruitful. We can be able to draw peace. We can be able to draw confidence. We can be able to draw our joy. From that continual relationship with our God. God has invested. God has completely availed himself to man. And desires that we seek him with the whole of our heart. God desires to respond that those things that always hinder our relationship with God, then may continue to infest in um, make in distractions. He tries to distract man's desire to know God and to divert his attention. But men and women who desire to have this intimate relationship with God who make it their priority. They want to have much of God. They want to know him more and more. And an intimate relationship with God is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Because we realize ourselves. And we are strong and we resist every attack on the, on the enemy. 
By seeing God, it's not just a matter of willpower. It is a spiritual battle for the enemy. That's a like us to pursue God. There are those barriers to our intimacy with God. And one of them is religion. The way we feel comfortable because we go to church. We are accepted wherever we go. We are involved in the activities of the church. And sometimes we feel contented. Religion can make us so contented. And uh, it stands in the place of our intimacy with God. Sometimes we can be involved in so many activities of the church. But without seeking that intimate relationship with God. We need to go beyond the religion and seek that intimate relationship with our Creator and our Maker, God, who has sacrificed His only begotten Son. The other barrier to our intimate relationship with God is shame or guilt. We forget that even when we have failed, God has given his son. And when the enemy reminds of your failures, remind him of the, of the sacrifice of God giving his son. Let not guilt haunt you. Dive deep into your relationship with God. Desire to know him, delight in him, read his word. Take time in prayer and worshiping of his name, of his, and worshiping of God. Dive deep into God and into this relationship with him. Let not your past, your failures and your mistakes shame you. God has invested to bring you to him. And he has dealt with your shame and with your failures. Rediscover yourself in God. The other thing that is a barrier to our intimate relationship with God is pride and self-reliance. We are doing well with the amount of God we know. We are doing well. We do not desire, we do not go seeking God. We feel like we are doing well by ourselves. We fail to uphold, to, to, to respond to God's grace in humility. And if you like, we are doing well. Pride and self-reliance is an enemy to an intimate relationship with God. Then the other barrier is preoccupation. preoccupation. We are so busy. We don't have time for God. We don't have time for prayers. We don't have time for His Word. We are occupied, but yet we say we love God, but we don't have time for Him. He doesn't become a priority to us. As we wind up on thinking about a need to meet God, let us also know that God loves to see from us that response of seeking him. He has promised to avail himself to us. He is available, but desires to see from us that response of love. He desires to see us loving back. 
He desires to see us investing our energies, our time. He desires to see us making him a priority. He desires to see us delighting in him. God desires us to see us moving to him and seeking him. Seeking our fulfillment in him. May the Lord bless you. May the, may all of us respond to God's love in commitment in humility and committing the wholeness of ourselves to him he is our treasure and when we find him we can forsake all the others that we are able to get this treasure and our relationship with God is a treasure to keep a treasure that makes us forsake every other thing in favor of this great relationship that God has invested in the investment through his son rest pray together our father and our God we thank you you expect from us a response of love commitment dedication people who delight in you who seek who knock people who have a longing for you our lord that we have been so busy preoccupied suffering crying and false contentment in the things of the world. Our Father, quicken our hearts, our Lord, that you may respond to your great love by equally, our Lord, seeking you and giving ourselves wholeheartedly to you, for you have availed yourself to us. Bless all of us, our Lord. Help us to depart from transactional kind of a relationship into a relationship where we delight in you. They can worship you, our Father, and it is in just name that we pray and believe. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord arouse in you an angel seeking him, making your priority, give your energy, give your time to this great and rich relationship. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's online service. We appreciate your participation and love. We urge you to continue connecting with us through liking, commenting, and sharing these messages with your family and your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more and more messages. God bless you.